Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to be creating a simple sword and shield model to go along with our handsome hero. Okay, so in the player blend file I'm going to go on to a new layer, just press shift C to center the 3D cursor, and then shift A and add in a circle. And I'll bring up the options with F6, and I just want to turn the number of vertices down to something uh, like 8 perhaps. Rotate this 90 degrees and scale it down because it's a little bit massive at the moment. Then go into edit mode and just extrude this out along the y-axis to create the grip of the sword. And then I also want to extrude out just a little pommel shape here. So I'll just extrude this a bunch of times and scale it and just make something interesting like that, I guess. Should be fine. I'll press F to fill in that face at the back. And then of course you can see that this is got its normals inverted, so I'll just select everything and Control n to flip the normals. I'd also like to squish this on the x-axis, so just scale it, like so. And then at the front here, I'm just going to Alt-right-click to select that loop, and extrude this out, just along the y-axis, like so. And then I'll fill that in. Okay, going into object mode, I'm going to add in a cube, and this is going to uh, form the guard of the sword to protect our hero's fingers. I want this to be sort of diamond, so I'll just rotate this 45 degrees along the z-axis, and then I'm going to move that in there, scale it up just so that it meets nicely with the grip here, and then scale this along the z-axis, something like that. Uh, I'll maybe quickly go into edit mode, add a loop in the center here, and I'll delete these faces for the bottom half, and just go into the modifiers and add a mirror modifier along the z-axis. Alright, so now when I extrude out this top bit, it of course gets mirrored at the bottom, and we can just flare this out a little bit, just to make it a bit more interesting to look at. Okay. This is maybe a little bit big at the moment. I'll just scale it down a tiny bit and scale it on the z-axis specifically as well. Okay, next I'd like to create the blade. So going into object mode, I'll create a plane object. Just rotate this 90 degrees. I'll move this out to the front here. And then from front view, I'm going to scale this down. And I want to first of all design the profile of the blade. So basically what a cross section of it would look like. So let me add a loop down the center here. I'll press T to bring up the tool shelf and just in the options menu, uh, enable X mirror so that I can just grab one of these vertices here and quickly design what this should look like. So I guess I want it to be nice and sharp at the bottom and then it can maybe be a little duller at the top. Something like that I think would be good. Okay, so then from side view, we can just scale this out to the size we want and move this back like so, and then just extrude it out along the y-axis. All right, I'm not really sure how long I want this to be at the moment. Maybe something like that is reasonable. And once again, we've got these inverted normals, so I'll just select everything and control N. Okay, this is maybe a bit thick at the moment, so I'll just scale it in on the x-axis, and that's starting to look quite good. Uh, I do want to curve the blade a little bit, uh, in the fashion of, say, a scimitar. So in object mode, I'm going to add in a curve, specifically a path curve. And if we go into edit mode on this curve, you can see that it's currently pointing out to the left here. So I'll go back into object mode and just rotate this negative 90 degrees along the z-axis. So now you can see it's pointing forwards. And also move this along the y-axis, just so that uh, it sits at the base of the blade. So let me just keep moving this back, uh, like so. All right. And now I'm going to select the blade object and add a curve modifier. And I want it to curve based on that nobs path we created. Now, currently this is offset weirdly. So let's just go into the path here, go into edit mode, and I'm going to select the... Uh, vertex at the base here, just press shift s and move the cursor to that selected vertex. And then in object mode, I'll press shift control alt c and move the origin 
to the 3D cursor. All right, I'll select the blade as well and move its origin to that point too, so that now everything is lined up correctly. Okay, now if we select the curve in edit mode, we can start playing with this, but currently the blade isn't able to deform nicely because it doesn't have any loop cuts. So let's go into the blade object, into edit mode, control R, and just add in a bunch of vertical cuts like so. All right, we can then go onto the curve once again, and we can now start playing with this. All right, so I'll curve it up like so, and we can also scale the blade uh, at each of these different points, not with S, but rather with Alt S, like so. So at the tip here, I want to scale it to zero. So I'll press Alt S followed by zero. And then let me just move that to the point there so it comes to a nice uh, sharp point. And I'll just start playing with each of these vertices of the curve until I get roughly what I want. Uh, maybe the blade can be a little bit longer. So I'll move this out and then on the actual blade object, we'll have to uh, scale this on the y-axis as well. Okay. I'm just going to tweak this curve a little bit more. I guess that's not too bad. Maybe curve this a little bit more dramatically. But I think that's basically looking okay. So on the blade object, I'm now going to apply the modifier. And I'll come to the tip here. And I can just select these vertices and just make it as sharp as I want by scaling that down even more. Then I'd like to give this some sort of nice stylized spike over here. So uh, the way I want to do this is by selecting a vertex and then turning on proportional editing with O so that I can uh, move this all up. But I don't want it to affect the bottom of the blade. So I'm going to go into face mode quickly. And I just want to alt right click to select the edge of the blade, but I don't want any of these faces at the bottom to be selected. So I'll press C and then middle mouse drag to just deselect all of these ones I don't want here, like so. And I don't want to affect the tip either, so let me just deselect that. And I'll press uh, Shift H to hide everything but those selected faces. And then going into vertex mode, I'll select the one that I want to make a spike. And with proportional editing turned on, I can uh, move this up a little bit like so. Maybe that isn't the right mode for the proportional editing uh, to get the effect I want, so I'll undo that. And let me turn on the sharp mode. All right, that's more the kind of spike I was hoping for. All right, so now that I've got that, I can press Alt-H to unhide this. And we can see I've got this nice dramatic spike. It's maybe a little bit overboard. So uh, <laughs> let me just undo that and maybe make it a little bit more uh, subtle. All right, that's looking nice. I am uh, just quickly going to delete this curve object since we don't need that anymore. Okay, now I'd like to just continue tweaking this a little bit. So this guard piece is quite big compared to the rest of the sword. So I'll turn off proportional editing quickly and then just scale this down a tiny bit on everything except the z-axis, like so. All right, and then on this handle, I'm just going to scale this front part down on the x-axis a bit, so that it uh, just joins a little bit more nicely. Okay. I think the blade is maybe not entirely going into the guard, so let me just shift that back a tiny bit. And I'd also quite like a little metal piece over here to just give the idea that it's sort of holding the blade in place. So let me add in a new cube object, and I'll scale that down and move it out to the side. Although let me actually do that in edit mode so that the origin remains in the center because I want to mirror this across to the other side as well. And let me just uh, scale that and place it nicely. I'll move it out along the y-axis and bring it to a bit of a point there. 
and bring it in along the x-axis a tiny bit as well. Okay, I think that looks good. So, let me now go ahead and apply the mirror modifiers on both of these objects. And I'll then select all of the objects and press Ctrl J to join them into one. And I'm then going to re-enable the player layer and we can see that the sword is a tiny bit out of scale, so let me just uh, make this a more reasonable size. I'll position it in the hand of the player, like so. We can see that the handle is a little bit too long, perhaps, so let me tweak that. All right. I'd like the origin point of the sword to be in the middle of the handle, so uh, let me go into face mode and just alt right click to select the faces of the handle there. Shift S, move the cursor to the selected faces, and then in object mode, shift control alt C, move origin to 3D cursor. So that's now the pivot point of the sword. Okay, I would like to give this some color. So let's go into the materials tab here. I'll add the metal material. And I'm also create a slot for the dark metal. So I'll assign the dark metal to say the pommel here and whatever you want to call this piece, as well as maybe the tip of the uh, guard. And let me also select uh, both of these little pieces here. I don't know if there's a name for those and just assign that. All right. Then I want the blade to be a sort of gray metal. So I'm going to have to create a new material for that. I'll call this blade and make that some sort of gray. Just select the blade uh, and assign that. And then to maybe uh, make it look a little bit sharper, we can create a blade highlight material. And that's just going to be an intense white. And then we go into face mode and just alt right click along these uh, two edge loops and assign the highlight to that. All right, that looks nice and shiny. So let me quickly select the sword object and just control A, apply the rotation and the scale. And now we can move on to making the shield. So I'm once again gonna go onto a new layer and press Shift C and then add in a NURBS surface. All right, I'm going to rotate this negative 90 degrees so that it's just facing forwards like so. And then in edit mode, I'm going to go into the surface options here and just make it extend all the way out to the end of its bounds. And then I'd like to mirror this along the x-axis. So let me just select these vertices along the left edge and delete those. I'll move this just across the center line, add a mirror modifier, enable clipping, and just bring these two halves together like so. All right, we now want to create the shape of the shield. So we can just start moving these vertices around to get something that we're happy with. So I'm gonna go for a sort of a kite shield shape. Something like this is Getting close, I guess. All right. Uh, maybe just go to side view and make this a little less bulgy. And I can select some of these vertices here and just uh, bend these. Just try and get a nice curve like so. I think that's already looking pretty much how I want it. So I'm going to add a solidify modifier to just give this a bit of thickness. You can maybe ramp that up a tiny bit. All right. We'll do some last tweaking. But I think that's looking okay. So what I'm going to do now is go into object mode and then press Alt-C, which is going to bring up this conversion menu. And I want to create a mesh from this surface. So I'll select that. Now if we go into edit mode, you can see we've uh, got this mesh, but it's got quite a lot of 
uh, faces at the moment. So I'm actually going to go into object mode and undo that and go into the surface options here. And I just want to turn down the resolution maybe to three on the U and V axes. So uh, you can see U is the uh, vertical axis and V is the horizontal axis. Anyway, that looks uh, okay. So I'm going to press Alt C once again, convert this to a mesh. And now you can see that's a little bit lower resolution. And I'm going to go into face mode. I just want to Alt right click on one of these edges uh, on the rim to just select this entire edge loop. And I'm going to press E then right click and then press Alt S just to fatten this a little bit. And I now want to select all of these around here. And this is going to be a sort of metal rim for the shield. Uh, the rest of the shield is going to be made out of wood. So in the materials, I am going to choose uh, maybe the, I think I'll actually create a new material for this actually. Um, I'll call this metal underscore gray. I'll just make this some sort of darkish gray like so. And then I'll press Control I to invert the selection. And I want to create another new material called uh, wood. And this will be some sort of brown, of course. Let me try assigning that, turn off the specularity. It looks quite okay, I think. I'll maybe just tweak that color a tiny bit, but I'm fairly happy with that. Uh, it might be nice to make some sort of like emblem on the front of the shield. Uh, you could of course do that using a texture uh, that, that might make the most sense, but I'm going to actually make it out of a mesh. So I'm going to add in a plane and from side view, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees and just bring it forward on the Y axis. And then from front view, I want to mirror this on the X and Z axes. So I'm going to cut it into four parts and in face mode, I'll just delete these three and then add a mirror modifier mirroring on X and Z. I changed the rotation, so I'm just going to quickly go into object mode and apply the rotation there. All right, now we can scale this down, except let me enable clipping first. All right, uh, something like that. I'm basically going to be making a simple cross emblem because I'm not feeling particularly creative today. You can maybe flare it out at the ends like so, just something nice and generic. And then I'm going to create a material for this. I'll just call this emblem. And this is going to be some sort of red, maybe something like that. And I want to make this actually wrap onto the surface of the shield. So it's going to need some more uh, vertices to be able to do that. So I'll just select everything and just subdivide it. That might be sufficient. Uh, so now we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier and the target object will be the shield. I've been neglecting to name these objects. It's a bit confusing. Uh, let me quickly name this shield instead of surf patch. Uh, so now we can choose the shield object for that. And I'm going to just project it like so. So now it's projecting that onto the surface of the shield. So I can now just add a solidify modifier to just give that a tiny bit of thickness so that it actually sticks out. Okay, so that looks quite nice. Okay, so we could still tweak this a bit if we wanted. Uh, so I might make this a little bit pointy at the ends here, like so. And then if we go into object mode, we can see it uh, wraps back onto the object. All right, uh, I'm not gonna do anything at the back of the shield, like any sort of handle or whatever. Um, just gonna leave it as is. So I don't really want to apply these modifiers because I might want to change the emblem later on. So instead of joining these objects, I'm just gonna uh, rather parent uh, this object to the shield. So now, it's like they're one object. And then I'm going to unhide the player 
and the sword layer. And I'll scale this down. Uh, I think my characters not actually need to be left-handed. Let me shift this over to his right hand and move the shield over here. It is actually uh, roughly the correct size, I think. Maybe a tiny bit bigger, smaller. That's actually probably perfect. So I will just apply the rotation and scale of the object. And that is now done. Although maybe the shield would sort of go better with the armor if it had a bit of that purple in it. So in the materials, I might replace this uh, gray metal with the, uh, let's try the dark metal. That's a bit too dark. I'll just try the regular purple metal. Now it ties into the theme a little bit better. I think that works quite nicely. All right, so that is everything for this video. Uh, in the next episode, we'll of course be animating some nice attack animations. But until then, cheers.